Hello my friends! I've noticed that the topic of MVP pattern is quite popular. Today I want to continue with MVP and demonstrate the process of adding a networking layer to the application. Where to place the networking layer is a common question when working with MVP. I saw and tried a couple of different approaches. I believe it belongs to the model layer. To illustrate this approach I will use an existing app that I built for a previous video. In that video I explained how to create a UI collection view and place its data surface in the presenter layer. Today I will extend the model layer to populate it through network calls to a Firestore database. First, let's add a new protocol color model. It will help us to change the model connected to the presenter quickly. I move the colors property and update colors function to the protocol. At the moment our model instantiated inside the presenter. I want to be able to inject it instead. I am adding a new init with model class in which the model variable is set. Now let's inject the model from the app delegate where our presenter is created. This part of the code where we are creating the root view controller is long enough and deserves its own method. Let's call the function make root view controller. Before filming, I quickly created a Google Firebase backend. If you want to learn how I did it, you can check the link in the video in the description. The next step is to add the Firebase and Firestore frameworks using CocoaPods. First, I need to add a CocoaPods configuration file by calling pod init in the folder containing my Xcode project. It will create a file named pod file where I can add Firebase and Firestore as dependencies. Pod install will download all dependencies and update my project. Now I have to use the workspace file instead of the project file. And finally I need to drag the property list I downloaded when created my Firebase project. When all required dependencies are added, I can import Firebase to the app delegate and configure the default database. The remote database contains a collection of colors. When we are making the request, the database returns the collection. To make it work with our app, we need to transform received colors into array of strings and then in the presenter transform it to UI colors. To do so, I need to create a new model class, let's name it color model remote. It should implement the color model protocol. Xcode helps me to populate all fields required for protocol conformance. In the update colors function, we need to add the new request to the database and it will get all documents from the color collection. When the request is completed, we'll use a guard statement to check if the collection is loaded successfully. We are going to ignore the error now and go straight to the unwrapped color value. I am printing all hex values of the color object so we can see that it works as expected. Now we are getting closer to the point where we can remove UIKit from the model. Let's start the app to see that it's working as expected. All six elements added to the database are printed successfully. The next step is to replace the type of our array from UI color to string. It will help to make the model more robust and testable. I need to replace all occurrences of UI color with string. The color storage will be returning the same strings I've added to the Firebase database. After we updated the type of the colors parameter, we should convert an array of query document snapshot elements that are returned by Firebase to an array of strings. We can do this by using the flat map operator. It will apply the operation to each element of the array, removing possible new elements. Let's assign it to our colors parameter. 
Because we use self in the closure, we need to add weak self in the beginning. When the operation is completed, we have to call the completion. In case of success as well as failure. To make the app work, we need to change one more piece of the code, the presenter. To transform the hex code into UI color, I will use a UI color extension. I use a slightly modified UI color extension provided by Paul Hudson. Now we can replace this array of UI colors with an array of strings and update the method returning color for index. To use it in our view controller, I will convert the string using the method we added in the extension. When the main view controller is updated, I can proceed with the details screen. We made its presenter to accept a UI color, and now we can change it to a string as well. I want to change the displayed string to show the hex code paste from the model. I think it will have more sense in this case. In a potential unit test, we can check, for example, that if the model has a hex color containing six Fs, then the presenter will have the string hex color following by six Fs. In the view controller, I am again converting it to UI color. Let's build the app. It works as expected. And now I can remove imports of UI kit from the model protocol and implementation. The next thing that is wrong with our code is the completion closure. At the moment, we can't tell what an update is successful or not. One of the ways to fix it is to add a boolean parameter that will be true if the operation was successful and false if not. I am intentionally ignoring the error, error handling deserves its own video. Let's return to the Firebase enabled model. It works and can be a good approach if you have only a few model classes in the app. But the biggest problem with this code is a tight coupling with the Firebase. What if we want to change the database provider at some point? It can be a tedious process if you have multiple models. The best way to deal with it is to add an additional level of abstraction. In the case of a simple app, it can be overkill, but it can be helpful in many cases. I am adding a group named Networking, where I will place my networking protocol. Let's call it a network layer. Now we need only one method there, it will be update colors, that will return as the same string array in the completion. Completion will be different this time. And let's add a class Firebase layer that implements that protocol. I am going to copy all the code I used in the model here and change the completion part to return the color array and an error where appropriate. In the remote model, let's add the network layer property. It will be the protocol type to make us easily switch between different networking implementations later if you need to. I am adding the new initializer and replacing the Firebase code with a call to our network layer method.
I'm adding the wig self on top of the closure. Finally, I can remove the Firebase input statement. To use this new model, I should use the new initializer. So, what are the benefits of placing network layer in the model? If you want to work on our app offline without dependency from the backend database, we can change the model class we are passing to the presenter. It will return us predictable values that we can control. Our view controller and even our presenter doesn't know about the existence of the network connection. In case of unit testing, we can replace the model with a class and especially for that purpose. I hope to return to this topic in future with more detailed examples and explanations. If you enjoyed the video, please like and subscribe to my channel. Thank you.